Hi guys, so today we're going to be taking a look at Teams Best Practice Basics. We're going to be talking a bit about channel setup, go back through app mentions and replies because that's the main thing that people seem to struggle with moving over from email. And I'll have a quick look at tab setup and some of the recommended tabs you should have in each channel. I'm Gavin Jones, I'm Transformation Manager for a Fortune 500 company. I've been working over the past year to get teams adopted by the organization and all of these tips are things that have come out of real life scenarios so hopefully you find them useful as well remember to subscribe and hit the little bell notification icon i've got a new video coming out every single tuesday and that'll make sure you get notified when we release the latest one so without further ado let's get into having a look at some of the basics for teams So I've got Teams open here and we're looking at the test team and we just want to start by looking at the channel setup. So we've got a number of teams across my day job organisation. I've got some small project teams and we've got some really large functional teams and they've got differing amount of channels in each as you might expect. Um, but some things we have found which might be useful. Um, so general advice is to keep your channel list as small as possible um, for as long as you can manage with a smaller channel list. The more channels you've got, the more chance there is of things getting lost um, because you won't know who's shown notifications for those channels and who's hidden them. So if you're using app mentions for the channel and not individual app mentions, then if you've got a really large channel list for not a big number of people in that team, you're likely to miss some um, notifications and some messages. On the flip side of that, we do have some project teams that got set up and then just tried to use the general channel. General channel notifications have been improved, so you can turn those off now, whereas you couldn't before. Trouble with just using general is, it works if you're a very small project team and there's not much collaboration going on, it's just occasional updates. If you're in a project team, that's uh, an important project and you've got lots of collaboration going on at everybody at mentioning general because you think you want you know most of the project team to know quickly becomes unmanageable because there's so many notifications that it's just signal noise ratio similarly where we've split out a number of um, subjects but then use general carried on using general for um, a lot of the collaboration once that project got closer and closer to go live, we started incorporating more and more people into that project. So as you're sort of, you know, getting them to testing or needing someone else's input, all of the files are in that team, rather than taking them offline and sending them to them, just incorporated them to the team. But then that obviously made that general problem even worse because then you've got more and more people that are getting pinged and there's no real way to just communicate between the core project team then. So my advice would be to, as you set up a new team, immediately add at least one more channel, even if you just call it core project team, because then people have got the option to dip in and dip out. If you always at mention general, it's, it's by default going to the entire team. So if you just at mention the channel that you've um, just added in, it's easy for people to come out of that channel because they can just hide it. So have as few channels as you can manage with but a good time to know when you need another channel is if there's just too much going on in a channel that you can't keep track of. So for example, in our main team, we've got loads and loads and loads of channels. We've got one for each account, and one for each sales sub-channel, one for specific subjects. Um, and there's still quite a lot going on in general because we want to like post you know, things that everybody needs to know into general, which is great but then there's nothing to stop anyone posting in there. So it's like people are getting bombarded every single day. So then we might want to split if there's something that keeps going in there, you might want to split that into its own subject. So people at least got the option to opt in or out um, of receiving stuff about that particular subject. Okay, so once you've got the channel structure sorted, um, next thing that people still struggle with, even really long time after training, is at mentions. It's uh, probably new to a lot of people that are not very techy. Um, it is in Outlook now, but not many people know, at least in our organization. And 
Uh, it's one of the things that probably older people struggle with and younger people just get straight away because they've grown up with app mentioning people in all of the apps that they use every single day. So just quick recap, this is in some of the videos, but if I start typing at and then my own name, it'll pop up a suggestion of who you want to at mention. Um, you just keep typing and it'll whittle down the suggestions. And if I put something in a post with an app mention, then that person that's been at mentioned will get notified, pinged, and it'll get into their activity feed and they can sort of work through their activity feed like an inbox or the thing that's most like an inbox in Teams. So we've been training, if you're new onto Teams, you need to put an app mention in every single post you do. If you just post it without an app mention, you can pretty much assume that no one's going to see that because if someone puts something beneath you, it'll go off the top of the page. If someone's going to the activity feed, it won't be there. Um, you're just relying on people just happening upon your post. So always put an app mention in every single new post. And then the second thing that people miss, and I think there's a user voice uh, article about this, trying to make this button a bit bigger, a bit more obvious, is replying in thread. It's just so, so important to keep all of your chats together, keep all the notifications uh, correct. So notifying people that you want to get notified and not notifying people you don't. Um, really importantly, reply in thread. So rather than clicking new conversation, if I want to reply to the bottom conversation, although that was an automated one, you need to click the reply button and not just post something there. If you do post something there, you'll know you've done it wrong because there's a gap. And how to get out of that is just copy what you just posted, hit reply, put it in the correct place, correct reply, post that, and then go back and delete your original one. Don't leave stuff there that's in the wrong place because it's just going to create a split thread. I've got another video on why that's important, which I'll link in below. But yeah, at mentioning and reply is just so, so important to keep all the stuff threaded all together, everything organized. It's just going to make your life so, so much easier. But it does need someone to keep sort of policing your channel or your team to make sure people are doing that and not getting frustrated that their message is getting lost or not replied to or whatever. So then lastly, uh, tab setup. Obviously we've got conversations, files. We'd recommend having a home tab. So that is just linking in the SharePoint page, not the SharePoint homepage of the SharePoint site that's associated with your team. So how to get that is just click the plus to add a new tab, hit SharePoint, and then it should come up with a suggested list of pages or now you can put in lists as well if you do SharePoint lists. And then just pick your home page. Um, we've already got one, so it'll probably you know, save it as home one or two. Um, but that's what it looks like. And then any news that you post in the team through the SharePoint uh, news functionality with SharePoint News Connector, which we've also got another video on, which I'll link in, gets posted back into the Teams conversations tab for you. But then all of your news is kept there. We've not done anything to this home page apart from just the default way it looks. And by default, it looks pretty good. So you get all of your latest news at the top. You can see all the news with that link. And then by default, you get activity. So you can see any files that anyone's working on across the team, who's done it, if there's any trending. And then SharePoint News is really easy to add in. Any other uh, web parts that you want to, to make trending news, trending files, have your entire folder list on there, some you know links that your team needs day in, day out. A really useful way of doing that. Also recommend having a planner. So we've also done a video on planner and we'll link that in the description below, but there's just so many benefits to planner. Uh, having it as part of your team, I really recommend that you put it into every single channel while, when you set up a team, because then someone new into Teams will just think that's part of Teams. They don't even need to know it's a separate app that's plugged in, really. As we said in the other video, really important what to name your planner because if you start using planner across your organization and you look at your own version of planner which is more info is in that other video you need to know which planner that is and whatever you name it that's the only thing you can see you can't really see which team it comes from when you look in your own version of planner um, so really important what, what you name that planner, something unique that someone would recognize if they got an action from there. And then Wiki, you get by default when you set up a new channel other than general, I believe. And we've got another video on how to use Wiki, but Wiki is just so, so useful. Some of the news posts functionality that uh, you can get sort of linking in files, 
putting pictures in, um, basically keeping everything together. It's a digital notebook with pages and sections and we've used it for, you know, how to use this channel, how to use the team, um, what business processes are used in this area of the business, um, loads and loads of stuff. And in our, our video about meetings, we've used it to reduce prep time with PowerPoint by just linking directly to people's prep files um, and just go straight to those in the meeting rather than going through a PowerPoint. So check that out. If you've got your channel list sorted, behavioral wise, out mentions and replies, keep plugging on at people to really understand the importance of doing that correctly. And if you've got your tabs set up from the start with all the things we recommend, you'll have a great Teams experience. So let us know in the comments below if you found that useful, uh, which elements do you use, which you want more information on, let us know and we can produce a video on that for you. And if you like the video, remember to like it, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified about our new Teams videos coming out every Tuesday. And then we love Teams for everything it can do. It speeds up stuff so much in uh, especially a large, large organization. But we still think that businesses have got a really big opportunity to improve how people run their meetings. And at MeTime, we've got an iOS app for iPhone that helps you run better meetings. There's a link in the description below. We'd love if you checked it out. Search for MeTime in the iPhone app store or visit www.metimeapps.com. So thanks for watching so far, and we'll see you in the next video.